All right, well, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, uh, Boo Boy Kennels. Have a uh, quick tutorial here on uh, some of the other features with uh, using QuickTime Pro, iWeb, and your own hosting in regards to uh, videos. Now, anyone that's ever used iWeb knows whenever you add a uh, video, it has a uh, particular limit as to uh, 10 megabytes. And if, if it's bigger than 10 megabytes, it's telling you that the video is too large. Now, even though you are able to add videos larger than 10 megabytes in size, you may want to be able to use a uh, higher qual quality or just a larger video in general. Now, one of the ways to get around that is one is to optimize the video for the web, which is where the QuickTime Pro comes in. And also, if you have your own um, server where you can upload your videos to and then just link to that video. Now, you can use um, any free uh, web hosting that will allow you to do that as well doesn't have to be a paid host or a server for that matter. What we're going to go ahead and do is I have a video here which was the uh, leopard uh, intro video and let me just uh, zoom into this right quick. As you can see this video is 4.4 megabytes. Now it is very small which using it on iWeb is not a problem but I want to be able to take this video and I want to use the QuickTime feature so what we'll do is we'll open up QuickTime which needs to be open click on file on file go to export for web and the box will come up for that as you see here, export version of your movie optimized for web delivery to iPhone and the desktop. Now, here's where it gets a little tricky. And I'm sure many people have, have bumped into this road one way or another. Um, in order to be able to view it on your computer, you want to select desktop. You have to select that. If you select iPhone and, and cellu cellular, it, it will upload, but it's only going to be playable on those devices. Whereas for your computer itself, you need to select desktop. So I'm just going to keep all three selected, have all three different versions. Uh, the other thing you want to note is create poster image from the current frame of the movie, the poster frame of the movie. Now, in my demonstration, I'm going to leave it as the current frame of the movie, and I'm going to show you as to why. I mean, I just cancel that for a second. Now, if you look at my video here, I have the cursor moved over a bit. So I have it pre-selected on the image, or on the video section that I want, which is why it's there. Now, when you go to export this to the web, if you want to use a certain picture or a certain frame of the picture, or of the movie, I mean, move the slider to where you want. Once you have it, click on export, and it'll commence into exporting your video. Now, I've already done this once, so it for this particular size, it took under a minute to uh, export this video. I'm sure with the uh, I show you running, since it does like to use a lot of the uh, CPU, it may take a bit longer. Only as far as the uh, video is being being done. Other than that, um, export times all vary on the actual 
size of your video. Now, um, one thing to note is that the video that I'm converting is an MP4 file format. The original recording was a uh, .mov, which, as we all know, using I show you, can be extremely large in some cases. So I ended up using a Visual Hub to export it or recompress it as a MP4, and then along with the QuickTime Pro, when it exports exports to web, it exports as a .m4v format. All right, now that we have that, I'm going to open up the folder location. It saves it to the movies by default. And as you can see, I have my folder here. I'll double click on that. And it will save uh, certain files. You say the, um, the desktop format, the cell phone format, the iPhone format. Uh, also, it has a uh, reference file as an MOV format. And also, the image, it's a JPEG image, of the frame that I had it set on. Uh, another thing to note, it will uh, create a README file or README HTML file. Now, what that file will do is it will give you the information needed to create this on a uh, on a web page. It gives you the uh, demonstration here, which I'll go ahead and I'll click that. <laughs> Okay. Now, another thing you want to notice is there's certain areas of this README page that has some code that you need to embed into your page. The uh, first part will go into your header, which is this section here. The second part will go into the body of your page, which gives it the reference files. Now, once you have that, what what you'll do is, and you can use any any HTML editor to do so. I just chose to use a Dreamweaver itself. Created a little simple basic page here with the video centered and everything. Uh, if you want to see as far as the uh, code itself, as I said, within the body tag. Well, Then the body tag goes the actual film, well, the actual code, and in the header tag will go the actual script itself. So that's where you would put that. Now, once you have your HTML page created however you like, you can then go ahead and upload that to your server which I've already done so here I already have it uploaded into uh, one of the uh, accounts that I have on, on with my host so that is now on there okay then if you want to use this for iWeb which as in my case I do uh, I use the poster image for my placeholder, so I put that. I link the poster image to the video file itself, so that way it sort of a lot resembles this. And I'm just using this on the uh, blog feature, which you can see on here. Now. The reason you want to use the image as your placeholder is because if you you can uh, also just embed the video itself using uh, some of the the code, not the entire code, but a good portion of the code. But it won't show the image. So if you want to show the image, then use it as your placeholder, and then uh, link it to the video itself. All right. Now once we have that, we'll go ahead and. Um, actually open up the web page and as you can see 
I have the web page on here. Now I have it to where when you click on the image, it'll actually open within the same exact page rather than opening a new page. So we'll go to now click on the image. And as you can see, this was the page that I had created with the uh, HTML editor or Dreamweaver. Like I said, a very basic, simple page. Um, I even added a little uh, JavaScript here, which will allow you to go back to whatever the previous page was. Just a little useful tidbit. And again, the same. Uh, the video is optimized for the web, so you can just go ahead and click on play. It'll load. And it'll play. Now, as I did mention, uh, this is just one of many ways to be able to use QuickTime Pro along with as many, many grand features. Um, I know uh, some of us, uh, including uh, eMeek and a few others, uh, have, have talked about QuickTime Pro and all the many things that you can do with it. Um, some people have asked, have asked, is it really worth 29 or 30 bucks? I know it's almost 30 is it really worth $30? When you get down and dirty and real gritty with QuickTime Pro, you will see it's more than what the cover shows. So as any good book, don't just look at the cover, open it up, read through it, try it out. And again, I, I like to use this in combination with iWeb. It just allows me to um, use larger videos with better playback time and as always try to keep it optimized for the web so if you like this tip you have any recommendations any comments or any video replies please be sure to post them other than that this was Bull Boy Kennels thank you for watching